Uh, it seems right. Uh, I think it's right. I hope it's right. Oh god. Oh god. The bit is broken. Look at the bit, the whole tip is missing. It just like fully sent it right into the hole. Like it was not even there. I'm going almost double the recommended speed right now. <laughs> Ew. I don't know what I did to deserve this. Man, it's bigger than I thought it was. That my friends is the Makera Carvera, a desktop in your house, normal person, CNC mill. I have wanted a CNC mill my entire life and I just shot in the dark. Yo, would you give me one? And they were like, yeah, Jake, we'd love to. We love your channel. What? Yes. If you're thinking it looks a little bit like a 3D printer and you have no idea what a CNC mill is, you wouldn't be that far off base. It's pretty similar construction overall. You got your axis. It can move left, right, up, down, back and forth. But instead of having like the plastic version of a hot glue gun on the end that just like oozes out hot plastic to build something, this has kind of like a drill on the end and eats away whatever material you've got planted down here. So it's subtractive manufacturing rather than additive manufacturing like you get in a 3D printer. I think this is a hundred pounds. Should be fine, right? I'm gonna have to go ask the neighbor for help. <laughs> Through the power of friendship, we have the Makera Carvera up in the studio. I had to make some slight adjustments in here to make it fit, but it is here nonetheless, and it's time to take a look at what else came in the box. And then since one of the projects is this cute little LED light, they actually include a little circuit board. They also included some PCBs, because this machine can be used to manufacture PCBs, which I've actually seen quite a few people use it for. We got corn bits, drill bit, and general bits. and an emergency stop button. Bam. There's our little e-stop plug. We'll plug it in right there. We've got a USB-C port, which is sick. Thank you. I've never actually used a CNC like by myself before. So this is very exciting for me. This has all the stuff you need to actually use this machine. I wish I knew what these were called, but let's go with like diagonal clampy boy. I was gonna watch a bunch of videos on like how to use the thing, but on their website, they're just like, bro, read the manual, and just try the test projects. There's two different pieces of software. There's Carvera Controller, which runs the thing. And then there's Makera Cam, which is the software you use to like take a model and turn it into instructions for the machine to cut. It's just like a 3D printer slicer, if you're familiar with that. Oh. Oh my God, it's moving. Oh my God. Oh my God, look. So I was able to connect to it directly over the Wi-Fi network it broadcasts, and then you can tell it to connect to your Wi-Fi, and now I can talk to it over Wi-Fi uh, while just connected to my network. Okay, that's the noise it makes fully spun. Let me close it for a second and see how much quieter it gets. Oh, wow. Okay. Man, that cover seriously reduces the amount of noise this thing makes. It's not grinding any metal right now, but it's not like ridiculously loud. Okay, so I finished reading the manual and I have learned a few more things. This is the manual probe. It's got this edge, you can just kind of snap it up against whatever you're trying to get the corner of. And then that'll give the machine a really accurate idea of where the corner is. We're gonna be starting with the three axis relief project. They give you all the sample G code and stuff, so I don't really have to do too much. The only thing I do need to do is trim a piece of this spoil board down to the same size as this epoxy stuff. We need to come up with a name for this machine. Maybe it's like Billy or comment down below. What should we name the Carvera? I think it deserves a cool name. Now we follow the instructions to bring it up. Okay, that thing is on there. It better not move. Oh, it grabbed it! It grabbed it! Iconic. Iconic! There you go, and you can see all of the stuff here on the side. I believe this one is saying to grab tool one. And, oh man, you can even see the cuts that it's gonna make. Wow. So, YOLO? Oh, it's grabbing the tool. I think it's just going to the position we set earlier, and then it's going to probe. With the little wireless probe. Bloop. There we go, it probed. Sorry, I'm being very unsafe, everybody. Much cooler. Safety is cool, I promise. Oh, shit, it's machining. Oh my god, it's machining. It's doing stuff, guys. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Holy shit. It's like cutting. Oh my god. Why am I so aroused right now? 
I can't believe it's working! Which is precisely what I said after getting an easy and affordable eSIM from Nomad, who sponsored this portion of today's video. If you're anything like me, then you'll know exactly how painful it can be trying to sort out a data connection when you're traveling. I've tried the carrier's super expensive roaming charges. I've tried getting a local SIM card. Heck, I've even tried other eSIM providers. All of those things have just resulted in taking an otherwise good vacation and turning it into a frustrating one. And why Nomad has become my go-to travel companion. It gets you instant and reliable access to a data connection in over 200 countries. Plus, it's super easy to get connected. Just download the Nomad app from the App Store, pick a plan, they have options for travel short or long, and you're connected, just like that. Not to mention, it's super affordable, with plans starting as low as $1.10 per gigabyte, and there's no hidden fees. So make your travel plans a breeze, way easier, by downloading the Nomad eSIM app. We'll have a link down in the description and a QR code here, and use code JAKU for 20% off your first plan. That's a smoking deal, all right? It was already a good deal, now it's a smoking deal. So I think what it's doing right now is just cleaning up the top surface to get it nice and flat. Now that it's machining like down in a pocket, the vacuum is picking up pretty much all those little epoxy bits. So that, that's pretty good. So far it's been using a big bit to take away all the extra material. And now it seems like it's switching to that really fine V shaped bit to machine out the actual details. It also seems to have cut out the channel around. Wow, so yes, thank you puppy. Because the parts that are done so far you can see look like crap, but then the parts that are more accurately machined now with the fancy fine tool, it's like visualizing it in there. That's so cool. All of the cheap mills I was looking at don't have an enclosure. So like you're making way more mess than this does. At least even if the vacuum doesn't really get it all, you can clean it up after pretty easily. First cut on the Makehera Carvera. It's a very detailed part. like. It went through with a, like a pretty rough bit to start. And then that second pass with like the little needle point, little V-shaped guy took so long. Here's the spoil board. You can see when it did the final cut pass to like free our little work piece there, it just barely cut into this. So this very useful if you're doing something like this. It would be cool to have a test project where you have to set it up yourself because a huge part of doing anything CNC is camp which is where you go from a 3D model into the movements of the machine, the speed of the spindle, how far you cut, all that sort of stuff. And that's the hard stuff. So Carvera, maybe think about having an advanced version of each of the projects where it shows you how to set them up because that's what I want to learn. The folks at Metal Supermarket, shout out to those guys. A really cool store in Canada where they just like sell metal in all shapes and sizes. Just gave me a bunch of like free blocks of aluminum out of their scrap bin. It's a little bit thicker than the material that I was working with on that test project. So I needed kind of a better way to mount it. So I went over to Princess Auto, which is our version of Harbor Freight, if you're familiar, like cheap budget tools. And I picked up this crappy little drill press vice for $25. Kind of a piece of junk. It's good enough to hold the metal where I need it to be for now. So let's see if it cuts then, shall we? Man, I almost forgot. There's also an air in. And what this is going to do is just supply compressed air to effectively just blow all the little chips of metal out of the way. Because I've been told when you're machining, chips of metal are not something you usually want, like, staying where you're cutting, if you can avoid it. It also helps cool the bit. And since some of the things I'm gonna cut are gonna take a really long time, cooling seemed like a good idea. Now, I hope this isn't too noisy. It's not gonna be too bad, right? It's pretty bad. Maybe if I just shut the door. Oh yeah, that, that helps. We go on the laptop and turn the air on. Air comes out. Cool, right? Now you can adjust the amount it comes out with this little nozzle. There's fully sending. I got it kind of pointed at the tip of the bit. So that seemed like it made the most sense, but uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. So hopefully it's good enough. I spent the last two days trying to decide what do I machine in like a reasonable amount of time for this project with the metal pieces I have. And I came up with engraving my YouTube channel name on the top of the piece of metal. So that's what we're gonna do. With the help of Fusion 360, I was able to set up a tool path for cleaning this long side here, the short sides on both sides, the bottom, and then of course cleaning the top and then engraving it. All of those are separate files that we have to load, which now is where it gets mildly interesting. So we go in here, we select our file, and then we have to tell it where the actual piece is. From this point in the corner right here, because that's anchor one's position, where is this corner? 
Now I can kind of eyeball it. Or you can use the manual probe with the magnet attached to the tool to find your corner. But I'm just gonna measure it and say our Y offset is zero and our X offset super duper eyeballed is like 22 and a half ish. I'll call it that. What better way is there to measure than using a very precise measuring tool in a super imprecise way? That's that's my favorite. Scan outline is just gonna draw uh, like a line with the probe just to show us that like, yeah, you did uh, do your dimensions like somewhat right. It's working! Holy shnikes, boys and girls, we're machining aluminum. And honestly, like the vacuum is grabbing most of the chips. I'm actually kind of impressed. Now this is using the default feed rates in Fusion 360. They give you a bunch of profiles you can download that gives you all the machine parameters, the tool parameters, at least for the ones that they include and whatnot. Why don't we just speed it up a bunch? That's 50% faster. Oh, come on. It just barely missed the end, man. Bloody hell. I mean, it's pretty clean though. I'm having a blast. I got a 3D printer with a tool changer, the Prusa XL, and now I got a desktop CNC with a tool changer. It's so cool. And this time, since I care about the design being somewhat centered, I'm gonna use the probe to mark out our origin corner uh, instead of just guessing with the calipers. We've got it super closely lined up on the corner there. You can see it's like just on the edge. And then if we go to our file, start running, Set our work origin to current position. Oh, you know what? I took like two millimeters off of the side to clean it up, which means this whole design is gonna be like two millimeters off now. The air assist seems to work really well, actually. I'm seeing like no chips left over, although it does make a way bigger mess. Oh my God, there's 20 minutes left. Uh, it seems right. Uh, I think it's right. I hope it's right. Oh God, oh God. Look at the bit, the whole tip is missing. Oh God. Oh, it just like fully sent it right into the hole. Like it was not even there. Um, I don't know what to do about this now. And now we try the laser. Now I put the animals upstairs cause lasers are kind of dangerous. And we of course need to be safe. For some reason in both Makera software and Lightburn with the profile they provide, it defaults to a maximum of 20% on the laser. And because it's such a low power laser at around two and a half watts, you need to turn it up a bit more. So I have it set to 90% max. And with the Lightburn output, which operates in a much faster method, like doing a tracking kind of style where it's adjusting the laser output as it goes to draw the image rather than making dots like Makera Cam does, um, it's, it's going pretty quick. It's Arlo and Wood Farm! It's so cool! <laughs> the line that's here is because I enabled the auto Z height, like leveling feature, which I should not have. Look at him catching the Bakari sweat bottle cap. Ah! While the laser is really weak sauce, it's still a really nice thing to have. Just like on some of those 3D printers that have lasers too. It's just like you get you get double bonus two in one, baby. It might not cut wood, but it will make it look cute. I know how I'm making Christmas presents this year. <laughs> However, I haven't actually cut anything out of metal that I'm actually happy with. Here's attempt one, which you can see I stopped part way because I broke a bit. And here's attempt two, which I let continue, but it continued with a broken bit. I'm gonna give it one more shot. Now I went ahead and overnight shipped some smaller bits. I actually kind of know how to use because that engraving bit, no idea how to make that work properly. It's time for my last hurrah. Will I be able to successfully cut something in metal? Now we find out. Ooh, please work. Oh, the air's not on. Shit. Now we just have to do two more stages with two bits that I don't have a perfect profile for because I bought them off the internet and uh, have never used before and hope that they don't break. Now, in order to get a new tool into the machine, if you don't already have the collars on there that are part of the tool changer, you see this one, that little black thing there, you need to put it on. You take the collar installer, take out the little removal tool, which I don't even have in there right now, and then back this part up, insert a collar, put the spacers in there, tighten it down and it pushes the collar onto the bit. And you gotta be careful because the bits are really sharp and you don't wanna stab yourself while you're doing this. And just like that, we've got another bit ready to go in the tool changer. I probably should have watched a few more videos before I started this. There's definitely a huge element of fucking around and finding out. I'm just stoked to finally be cutting something in metal and it not break. Oh God, I gotta watch this. Oh God, please don't up. Please don't up. Ah, 
Oh god, it's fine. Okay, everything's fine. It's going real slow, and it looks pretty clean. God damn it! <laughs> I'm so dumb! I'm so dumb, dude. I just cut like a straight line through the whole sign. Yeah. Well, let's spend a bunch of time cleaning it up so it looks pretty, huh? That seems like a good use of time. Uh -huh. I've got this thing ripping right now at double the recommended cut depth. Man, it's, it's going. I'm almost tempted to go faster, but like, it's so close to finishing the cut. That would be so brutal if it broke at this point. Oh, it's doing it, 180%. It's starting to make a spooky noise. I think I'm gonna not go any faster. I'm gonna try 200%. It literally handled double the speed at double the depth I'm supposed to be doing. Not bad, eh? It's just cutting out the last little bit at the very bottom and leaving a couple little tabs that I can just snip out. Aside from the giant gouge in the top and the fact that I didn't actually do like a finishing pass on the top to clean it up, the cuts are pretty clean. I mean, there's a bit of bumpy bumpy. Again, I really didn't do a finishing pass and I was full sending the side, like going way faster than I should have. To, to be fair, like it's not uncommon to go fast while you're just trying to rough stuff up and then do a slower cleaning pass. That's totally acceptable and understood. I just didn't do that. It's just like a little reminder of, I don't know, measure twice, cut once, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, this was probably the most frustrating video I have yet to make. Not because the product is bad. Honestly, now that I've made it through something like pretty much to completion, aside from the giant gouge, I'm genuinely very impressed with the amount of oomph this machine has. I went into it thinking like, uh, it'll like kind of engrave metal, but like cutting it, poof. Look at that. I cut like 15 millimeter thick aluminum in like, 20 minutes or something like that. I mean, the entire process of this took way longer because I didn't know what I was doing, but now that I'm getting used to how it works and doing cam and, and actually making some things, my excitement level, it has returned. I'm no longer like wanting to throw this thing off of a cliff. It's not without its flaws, don't get me wrong. The software is not amazing. It, it's still cool that they're trying to you know, make cam software that's free and included right out of the box. And I've already seen that the community has made efforts to take what is there and make it even better. There's like community firmware and software that like fixes some of the bugs and makes some improvements, which hopefully will get mainlined into the main program and, and they can kind of just work to make it better. And I've heard some interesting things about like the back electronics area not being properly sealed from the main chamber, which if you buy one of these machines, definitely check that. You might want to silicone around it or something like that. But overall, it fulfills its purpose better than I thought it would. It's giving me the ability to make things out of metal that I did not have before in a very, very compact form factor with honestly, not a lot of downsides. The biggest one, of course, being the price. Excluding the wireless probe, which I would highly recommend getting, makes aligning stuff and leveling stuff much easier. This thing is 5,500 US dollars, which is not cheap. It does have a pretty substantial build area considering the overall size. It does cut metal, it can laser etch wood. It, it's really freaking cool, but that is a lot of money. Stepping into the next price point, to get something that's fully enclosed like this, you're probably spending multiple times more money. Sure, you could have a manual mill and that would be really cool, but it's automatic, it has a tool changer. They do have other machines that are way cheaper. The Carvera Air, which is a much smaller version without a tool changer, is half the price. And the new Z1, which is currently on Kickstarter, I would never recommend Kickstartering anything, but once it's shipping, thousand US dollars for a machine that can machine metal, has a camera, does a bunch of cool stuff. So assuming that actually makes it to market, the world of like homegrown manufacturing in freaking metal, it's becoming a reality and that is so cool. So let me know down in the comments what you think about the Makera Carvera. I wanna make like a CPU cooler with it. Wouldn't that be crazy? It'd probably be terrible, but like at least I could say that I tried like this.